It's right before the lines get wide. It's two lines up from those wide lines. 27b. Stories about it. My Kamifagi, Rabbi Huda ben Gadish, Rabbi Eliezer, Bahani Tanai de la Kaman. What is the Machlaikis between Rabbi Huda ben Gadish and Rabbi Eliezer and the Tanaim that we're going to mention shortly? Talking about buying um, produce with miser money. Miser means you, you, the second tithe. What you did was you took your first tithe, whatever, that's given to the lady. Second tithe is supposed to be transported to, to Jerusalem. The problem is that you can't carry all of that grain and whatever. So you redeem it and you bring the money. When you get, when you get there, so it says that you could buy anything you want, anything that you desire. And then it lists some items, cattle, sheep, wine, and, and um, intoxicating beverages. And it concludes, anything that you want. Okay, so we had a machlekes if you're allowed to buy fish fry. Rabbi Yehuda ben Gadish said, you can buy tzir. And Rabbi Lezah said, no, you can't buy tzir. Um, that's only if, the, if it has the, the, um, the insides of the fish inside it, because fish you can buy, but not brine. Okay, so what's the machlekes between those two opinions? What's the machlekes between the next opinions that we're going to talk about? So he explains like this. Rabbi Yehuda ben Gadash, Rabbi Lezah Darshi, Rebu Yomiyuti. Bahani Tanai Darshi Klal Yiprat. We have, in this Pasuk, we have a Klal Yiprat to Klal. Klal Yiprat to Klal is a, um, it says, the Torah starts off saying, you can buy anything that you desire. Then it says, this, that, and the other thing. That's cattle and, and sheep and wine intoxicating beverages. Then it goes further and it says, in anything that you want. So this is sort of like, um, this guy says, he tells me, Rabbi Smith, for you, anytime. On Monday at 5.15, so anytime, but uh, you know, then he limited it to Monday at 5.15. So the Torah says, you can buy anything that you want. And then it limits it to cattle, this, uh, you know, wine and so how do you view this klala prata klal? And then there's the ribe miyot in, in, in um... Rabbi Yudha ben Gadash Rabbi Laza dashi ribe miyot. Rabbi Yudha ben Gadash Rabbi Laza dashi in Rabbi Laza dey dashi in ribe miyot. Now, ribe miyot is more inclusive than klala prata klal. Klala prata klal is that um, for you anytime, um, 5.15 on Monday. It means when you give that detail, you've just done away with all of that general rule. That's a klala prata klal. Ribe Mute looks at them as independent. I have the general, I have anything that you want, and I have a miut. I have, I have um, specifically cattle and the wine and, uh, Intoxicating beverages. It's not as limited. It's not only those. I also I still have, I still have the the riboy. I still have that first rule. It still exists. So it goes like this: Benasata bakesef b'cholasher tava nafshach a riba. There's an inclusive, a general rule that you can buy anything that you want. Babakar batzayin b'yain of a sheichem niyat. Now I have a limit on that. The limit is that it's cattle, sheep, wine, and intoxicating beverage. But then it goes back and it includes anything that you want. So how does it work? Riba miya to riba. Riba hakal. If you look at this, not as limiting, like the Klala Prat would do. If you look at this as independent learnings. There's a riba and a miyat and a riba. What you're doing there is you're really including everything. So why do you say those limits? Why do you give those, those um, details? My rabbi, 
Rabbi Kalmili, he included everything. Maimiyat, what do those details do? But Rabbi Lezimiyat, Rabbi Lengadashmiyat, Maimamela. Those details just limit one specific item. They don't limit the whole Reba. I have two Rebas here. I have two uh, general rules. Those details just limit one item. What item is it? So it's a machlekes. Rebbe Leza says it's miyatzir. You can't buy brine. Rebbe the Megadr says you can't buy salt water. He said even salt water that's mixed together. That was our, uh, that was our conclusion before. You could only buy if it had oil in it. Okay, so they take the Reba miyat Reba approach. Bahani tanoi darshi klali uprati. However, the following prices they do it differently. They do a klal uprata klal. Tanya was taught, in general, I think the, the, the difference of how to learn is machlek is really Rabbi Kiva and Rabbi Shmal. Uh, if you do klal uprata klal or riba, riba, riba it's in, in general, when you have this type of wording in the Torah, we, we'll, you're always going to see this machlek is. When you see the klal uprata klal, you see, you'll see the contrast. It'll be easier. The Tanya was taught in a brayse of nasata bekesa b'chol shetav nafshecha that you put the money, you buy with the money and anything that you desire. Klal, that's the general rule. Okay, and now we're gonna see a big limit on that. What's the details? He's limited entirely. Then it goes back and it says the general rule. It goes back to the general rule. Anything that you want. Now, I have a klala prata klal. Klala prata klal, when I just had the klala prata, all I had was the details. Klala prata is only the prat. When I have another klal afterwards, then it's including some more items. So that klal prat, that's like you're finished. There's nothing other than those items that are um, that are acceptable. So why do you say a klal afterwards? Okay, it's including something. It's including something else. It's exactly the opposite of the riba of the riba miyat riba. Riba miyat riba. I still have the riba. I really have everything. The miyat just is memayat one item. The klal prat gets totally limited by the prat. And then the klal that come afterwards just includes one item or, or something similar to the, to the prat. So how does this work? It goes like this. Klal prat to klal, yeta danel kana prat. The only thing that could be included are things that are very similar to the prat, to the detail. Ma prat mefurish peri mi peri gduli karka. Af kol peri peri gduli karka. What are those details? Those details were cattle, sheep, wine, intoxicating beverages. All of those are peri mi peri. It's a fruit from a fruit. It means it's an item that comes from another item. So the cattle is born from its mother. It's a peri mi peri. It starts in one thing and it gives offspring to another thing. And the same is with the grapes. Those are planted in the ground. And, uh, and they grow. So it's a peri mi peri, and it grows from the ground. Do the animals grow from the ground? Apparently, yes, they eat produce, they eat, um, they eat uh, whatever grows from the ground, hay, straw, fodder. They eat, uh, they eat things that they're, they're gedule karka. Another gemaras, it's gonna be different. It doesn't mean that you're gonna say hadama on, 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 on meat. But it's in this context, it grows from the ground. The and then we have another brisa. Ma prat mufurish vlad vladisaretz. I've called vladis vlad vladisaretz. Here it says that they're created from the earth and in the six days of creation, which means that the animals and the grapes are created from the earth. In the, in, the, in, in, the, in the creation, in Bracious, they're created from earth. 
So therefore, anything else that's created from Earth, this could be included. My Benayo, what's the difference between these two, these two expressions? One of them said, Kidule Karka, Perimi Peri Kidule Karka, it grows from the ground. Another one said it was created from the earth. What's the difference between them? Amarabaya dagi mekebenai, the difference is fish. If you say it has to grow from the ground, honey dagi mekebenai karka, no, no. Fish grow from the ground. Okay, the assumption here is that fish are going to eat um, seaweed. And seaweed grows from the ground I, I still don't know what brachi is saying, seaweed. But um, I think most people say shahakal. I don't know if it's a, probably a plant that's on the ground and then it gets separated. I don't know. Um, then, so fish are gidule karka and they're peri mi peri. They eat, they grow from the ground. I mean, they, because they eat what, uh, what comes off the ground. They eat other fish, whatever it is, plankton and krill or whatever. Um, but I don't know what that grows off. Maybe that can grow off from, I don't know. So, fish, according to the first uh, version, would be considered something that you could buy. You go to, you go to Yerushalayim, you want to buy with your Maishasheni, Money, you want to buy fish. According to the first version, you can buy fish. According to the one that says that it was created, it needs to be created from the earth. Then fish weren't created from the earth, fish were created from the water. So those items that are specified in the Torah, which is cattle and wine, those are created from the earth. So you can't buy fish because those weren't in those details. They're not even similar to the details that are in the Torah. You can't buy fish in your shalim with your maestro shani money. The Gemara asks, the Gemara challenges this. This was a statement by Abaya. Does Abaya say that fish grow from the ground, that they eat the, the seaweed? And that's how they grow. However, but Abaya says, if someone eats petisa is a water insect. Lake Arba, you get four Malkus. Now there's all this Malachlekes Rishonim, which exactly, which Psukim are exactly under this category. Rashi says, well, two prohibitions are Al Teshaksu is not Shusechim, but Chol Sheretz Asheretz Leite Tamo Behem, that's two. Mibisarim Leisechelo, there's another one. Vachol Shein Leisnape Bekaskes Leisechelo, and also it doesn't have fins and scales. Okay, so it's four. Nimala, the eat an, uh, an ant. That's on the ground. So then, like a chamesh. Then you have other prohibitions. What are those prohibitions? Well, the first two is anything that's al uh, teshaktu of leisetamol. Then you have chalhayla chalgachen. Anything that uh, that creeps on the ground. And then that's okay. Kol asheretz alar that's shekitzu leyachol. It's four. And then like the tamas nafshusifim chol asheretz reimis alar that's number is five. Okay, so if it creeps on the ground, you have an extra one. Now, the imisa, and if you say that it grows from the ground, that fish grow from the ground, so then you should also get a fifth prohibition for eating that water insect. That, that would include sheritz alaretz or haremis alaretz. You should have a fifth prohibition. If you remember that story with the Ramban student that he ate um, chalev on Yom Kippur or something, or a pig or something, and he, he argued with the Ramban how, um, how many prohibitions he, he, uh, he did. Ramban said six, he said seven. So um, anyway, according to this Gemara, if someone eats an insect in the water. So why is it only four prohibitions? It should be five prohibitions. If it's if it grows from the earth. Ella Ravina, Ravina says no. When the Gemara says Ella, it's always retracting from the answer before. 
So Abaya's answer was that it's the difference between the two brises was fish. If you're allowed to buy fish with Meister Shani, the Venus says no. The Machlech says if you're allowed to buy fowl, you're allowed to buy poultry. If you if you can eat um, if you can eat chicken um, with your Meister Shani money, if it could be nice. According to the one that says that they grow from the that they grow from what they eat, which is from the ground. So Well, birds eat what grows from the ground. They eat little grains and actually eat anything that's little. <laughs> They'll eat the styrofoam uh, holder. So whatever. But the, what they're supposed to be eating is what grows was what grows from the ground. Amanda Amar Vlad Vlad It says that it was created from the ground. So Hani Yefes Minarakak never know. Birds weren't created from the ground, they were created from mud. It's a mixture of the ground and water. So you can't buy poultry with uh, my sashini money. Kumar says, Manda marbi oifus my time and manda mamat oifus my time. How does this work? We have two prices. Why are they doing that? Why is one saying, both of them are holding klala pratiklal, so they're very limiting to what you can purchase with my Sashani money, because those details, they are limit, limit the, general, the general rule down to those details. And the second klal includes it, includes back in anything that's similar to those details. So why is there a machlekes? Does it include the birds? Does not, what, what it's, what's, their, uh, what's their explanations? The Gemara here is gonna explain that when I have a klal of prata klal, what do I really have? One opinion holds that you really have a klal prat. And then the klal afterwards comes in. The other opinion says you really have a prat to klal. And then the first klal comes in. Now the rule is klal prat is in the klal al prat. You're totally limited, you have nothing left. You have not, you're not including anything but those items that are listed. If you have a pratiklal, then you've automatically in, in, included more items because you said the general rule after the, the details. So the first klal is even more, is more inclusive. So we have two ways of looking at this. Man de Mar is the one that includes the birds because of our klala basra dafka. Prat that uklal, the, the, the second klal is the main one, and it's really a prat uklal. Nasa klal maisifala prat visarablu kol mili. Really, you're including everything. However, the first klal comes in, first general is a general um, rule that says anything that you desire comes before the prat to tell me that yes, it is also a, a prat uklal uh, prat. And we have to remove anything that's not similar to the prat in two ways. But really, we would include everything. Amanda Mamataifis, the one that excludes the, the birds, Kasava Klal Kama Dafka, it's really a Klalu Prat. You really, you, before you started, you really excluded everything. Klalu Prat, Bain Bechlal Al Masha Befrat, you have nothing left. You can only in, include those items that were listed. Honey in media light, it's only those items. Honey Basra, okay. Afterwards comes in the second general rule. The Rabuya called the Damla Mishlesh something has to be similar in three ways. So what are we left with? Is that according to the opinion that holds that you can't include birds, it's because he learns that really it's a prat, it's a klala prat. You've excluded everything. Comes along a third klal, a, a second klal after the the, the klala prat. And we'll include anything that's similar to those details in three ways. And what are those three ways? It needs to be peri peri kaduli karka and have been created from the earth. The birds were not created from the earth, they were created from the mud. Okay. Okay, we started off this Gemara with the Mishnah that says that you can use anything for an Erev, and you can use anything for sheet of Mavais, except for water and salt. You said that you can buy 
um, anything with Meiser Shani except for water and salt. We included in that also salt water. It's mixed together. We said that as well. Now, Amar Rav Yehuda Mishmei De Rav Shmuel Bar Shelas Mishmei De Rav. Rav Yehuda, who was himself a student of Rav, he says in the name of Rav Shmuel Bar Shelas in the name of Rav. Ma'arvin B'Pafuen. From those items that you're allowed to use for, which is basically everything, all food, that you're allowed to use for your Erev, you can also use, we're talking about the Erev, probably that you put outside the city, 2,000 Amas. It has to be food. From the, what's considered food? Papuan, Shrashi tells us is cress. It says it on the next page or something. Okay, type of uh, like lettuce to Bechal Galugais, Bechalag Lugais. I don't know what this is. First lane, as uh, Steinzelt said. Good, 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 Gedanias. This is a sweet clover, according to the Steinzelt. Avalai Bechaziz, Valai Bechafnias. But you can't use unripe grain, green grain, and you also can't use unripe dates. So we have things here that are considered edible. And you have things that are not considered uh, food. Yeah. This is how it is. In uh, yeshiva, there's, um, sometimes there's a bacha that is, he only eats pizza. <laughs> Everything else isn't food. So, okay. That's, that would be butler daite. It's a kolodim. It's, not, it's just one individual. He doesn't count. So here, um, you have these items that they could be, they're not considered food because maybe they're really animal food. Um, but Rav is saying that, no, these are considered food, except if these unripe type, types of things. Okay, now the sweet clover, the good gudonia is Nima Arvin. Are you allowed to use good gudonia as a, as a food for the era? But Tani, we have a brisa, very interesting brisa. Good gudonia is Mirube Banam Yaifu, Ashukhe Banam Layaifu. Someone had a lot of children already. He can eat good kudanias. Apparently, okay, it's not good for the reproductive system. So, but if he already has a lot of children, he can already he can eat these. If he doesn't have children yet, don't eat these. Bim Lazara, and if they've already um, the seeds in them have already hardened, in other words, that they're ready to be planted in the ground. So then, Achmiru Badam then no one should eat them. So it's unhealthy. So what are you telling me that you're allowed to use this as for the Erev? Apparently not everyone can eat them. So Tirgama Ashleyuk Salazarim Murubi Banu says, well, let's say that we're talking about someone that already has children and it hasn't hardened into a seed yet. So therefore you could eat them. Be by Yusema and Adipshat. Really, we're dealing with someone that didn't even have children yet. How could he use it for an Arab? You shouldn't be eating this. The What's the problem? It doesn't have to be edible to him. It has to be food. Did we not learn in the Mishnah? We said even a, a Nazar that took a vow that he's not going to drink wine is allowed to use wine for his Arab. I, he can't drink it. So what? Other people could. It doesn't have to be that he has to be able to eat it. It has to be that people could, which should be able to eat it, according to this. And the Yisrael can put truma, even though Yisrael is not allowed to eat truma. The regular Jew, truma is only eaten by a kayin. But if it's fit for someone else, it's good enough for the Arab. So too here. Even though this person himself happens to be that he can't eat it, it's not good for his uh, reproductive system. But nevertheless, uh, it's still good for an Arab. The Gemara says, It's not fit for him, but it's fit for someone else. It's good enough. another pshat. When did Rav say that you can use this for an Erev? This is talking about the good Kudanias that come from Madai, media. And over there, it's a different quality. Those are much better and those are healthier. Okay. 
Gemara now asks, the chazis loy? You can't use chaziz. Chaziz is, um, is unripe grain. But Rav Yudah Marav, Rav Yudah says, Name Rav Kishas, Vechaziz Marvin Ben. Kishas is, I think it's that, um, Dadr. Dadr is this, um, very interesting plant that has no leaves. There's no leaves on it. It just, it's, um, uh, what's it called? It wraps itself around other plants and it's uh, uh, around the host plant. A vine? It's not actually a vine. It looks like a bush. It looks like, it looks like straw, like just a bunch of, um, of, um, of twigs. It dies when you cut off the other plant. So it just grows around the uh, around the other plant. So it says these two things. The problem is, Rav hold that you can't use chaziz, which is unripe grain. But what's one second? But we have Rav Yehuda Rav that says kishas v'chaziz ma'arvim there. You can use them, chaziz and kishas. We didn't mention kishas before. And you say hadama on them. It's, it's a regular food. Most is like kasha. It's not a problem. Hamikami the asar rav the bavel the lebasa the asar rav the bavel. Rav actually started off in bavel, but he moved there to Israel and he was there for many years. And then he came back. He learned by Rabbi Danasi, and he was together with his uncle Rabbi Afterwards, uh, he got smicha from Ra, from Rabbi Danasi, and he moves back to bavel. He becomes a big rav in bavel. Um, after he comes to Bavel, so he sees over there that people are eating chaziz. So he says, ah, oh, chaziz is food. So you can use marvin be chaziz. In Eretz Yisrael, they would never have done that. They, would, they, want, they, they didn't eat it there. It wasn't food. In Bavel, it is food. So you have a contradiction in between statements of Rav. It depends where Rav lived. Umar says, Bavel have you alma? So what? That in Bavel, they eat it. Bavel is the majority of the world. And you're just going to follow what they do in Bavel. But Tanya, we have a brysa. Apul is beans, Saira is barley. Batilson is fenugreek. Shazar and Yerek. You see, these, these items are grown for the, for the seed that's in them. The beans or the barley, that's the seed. And the fenugreek is the seed. So, but if someone grows them, Yerek, for the green part of that plant, wants to eat the green stalks or the green part of that plant, not the seeds. So then, his mind is nullified in front of all people and it's not counted. And therefore, the seeds are chayev in miser. You don't have to take miser, you don't have to tithe what this person thought that he's going to eat. The green part of it, you don't have to tithe, it's not food. Okay, Bashachlayim is again Kress by Gargir, is Arugula, according to Steinsaltz. And, and Rashi actually says Arugo, Urugo. Shazaram um, Liyarek, this is different already. This is if you planted it for the green, they used to use the seeds of the Arugula for, as food, but they could also use the, the, the leaves. The leaves, it's pretty good today. Um, it's sharp. It's, the, it's like um, it's a little like horseradish type flavor. Shazar and Yerek, Masash Yerek Vizera. Even if you planted it for the greens, you take Miser from both, from the seeds and, and from the, the, the greens. Zara and Lazera, but if you plant it for the seeds, Masash and Zara Vierek, either way you do both. You take Miser from both. Our question here is not this end part, not the arugula part. The, our, our question is this tilson that someone planted it for the, for the green. You say, butler dites it's a club. So what's Rob telling me? That in bubble, they eat it. We should say, butler dites That uh, so what in bubble? What's, uh, what's bubble? Well, Kikama Rab, the Kikama answers. Places goes through that. There's different levels here. It's not so simple. You just say a whole location eats something. Um, 
and you say that we don't consider what they what they're doing in that location that's uh, that's significant it also has to do with if it's something that's actually logical for them to do kikamarav we get the the Rav was talking about a garden variety of this um, chaziz. He said it was this green grain, and this was actually edible. This was a better variety, and that's why this you can use for an area. The Gemara now asks, Zara Gargala my chazi? What do you do with the seeds of the rugula? I'm Rabbi Yechanan. Yechanan says, "Can we show him shleil and pilpulim? Early generations that didn't have pepper, sheikh can I say you makpil by us at sleep? They would grind this up and they would dip into it the uh, roasted foods." Reb Zera, we had this kamar once before. Ki avi cholish migirsim when he was tired from his learning. So avi also v'yasav apischad Rabbi Yehuda Barami. He went to sit by the gate. Uh, by the entranceway to the yeshiva of Rabbi Yehuda Barami. And he didn't have strength to learn, but he still had strength to do the mitzvah. What mitzvah? When the students will come out, I'll stand up in front of them. And that way I'll have the mitzvah of standing up for uh, students of Torah. I'll get the reward. The child comes out from the yeshiva. What did you teach you, teach you today? It's a good school. Um, it's what the children need to know, what brachas to say. Very practical. He says, on daughter, kishas, you say adama, and on chaziz, you say shahako. It's unripe. Unripe, you say shahako. Chaziz, well, let's see what Reb Zeyra responds. He says it should be exactly the opposite. The opposite is more logical. The daughter doesn't even attach to the ground. The daughter is a, like a parasite. Um, it, it grows on this other plant. You should say shahakal on that. It's, it doesn't grow from the ground. But the kishas, I'm sorry, but the chaziz, the unripe grain, that grows from the ground. That should be hadama. Rabbi, yeah. for, forgive my Bronx accent, but we were talking about Mother Earth. Then you mentioned the father. Now you're mentioning the daughter. I'm like not necessarily following this, and yet's no comment if he's around. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, kid. Yeah, the whole, the whole is, there a, is, there, is there a son too? <laughs> the halacha and the halacha is, he anuka the beirav like that child. The child was right. That you say Adama and the daughter, and the, you say Shahakal on the unripe grain, on the fodder. <laughs> no, you're confusing me, Dr. Stein. I can't even say it. Uh, I'm going to use the Hebrew. You say Adama on the Kishas, and you say uh, Shahakal on the Chaziz. My time, why is he right? Hi, Gamar Peri, Vahi Lad Gamar Peri. The kishas is the end product, so that's already, already, already at its final stage. It's already a finished product, so you can say hadama. The other one is unripe. You say, on something that's unripe, you say shahako. My dekamet karabi vaimavir karabi loyi. Your other claim that you said that it grows from the air, that's not a correct claim. You see, it doesn't grow from the air. Loyi. It's not correct. Kishas nami me'ar karabi. Kishas also grows from the from the ground. Me'ar karabi. Why? The kachazina, the katlin leil hismasa umaisa kishusa. You see, if you cut the bush that it's growing on, it dies. So you see, even though you don't see the end of it attached to the ground, but the fact is that if its host plant is removed from the ground. So it, it dies. That means that it gets its nourishment from the ground. So it's Adama. Gemara asks, you don't, you can't use unripe dates. 
can use Amnite dates as a Erev. We use uh, uh, the dates that we eat are always, um, always dried. I don't know if you can eat them when they're yellow. This could be an earlier stage than that. Not that it's just not dried. Maybe it's an earlier stage where it's still in the, um, those, uh, the husks that it grows, that it grows in. But Tanya, but it was taught in a brisa, kor, kor is the heart, hearts of palm. In our brachas we had kora. The hearts of palm is the, the inside, the core, the core of the, of the tree. Um, is you cut that off and you could, you could eat it. So nikach bekesef maiser. And you could, you could use maiser money to buy it because it's considered a food. However, vein metamen to masaychlen. But it's also not considered a food. It's not considered a food to, be, to become tame as a food. Tuma seichlen means that food can, can, is susceptible to tuma, can contract tuma, impurity. It comes in contact with something that's impure. But this is not considered a food. You said it is a food. You said it's not a food. So it's somewhere in the middle. The kafni ice. What about these unripe dates? Ah, this is nikachis bekesef maiser metamis tuma seichlen. This is totally a food. And you can use my money to buy it. Rabbi Yudha Aimer, Rabbi Yudha says, Kar hari o keitz l'chol Kar is actually just wood. So, that means that it's not metami to masaychlen. El shenika pekes of maiser, but you can use my money to buy it. The Gemara asks, um, that's the same opinion as the Tanakhama. They also said that. Uh, it's not metamit to masechel. You can use guess of maisa. Use maisa money to buy it. Using maisa money is because it's a fruit from a fruit and it grows from the ground. Like we said before. The kafni is a real Unripe dates are like fruits. Elishep turis mina maisa. You don't take maisa because it's not the end of the. It's not, the, it's not the finished product. According to the Tanakama, you do take Meiser on Kafnias. And it's also Metamit to So what are you telling me that you can't use this for, so for an Erev? It's Metamit to According to the Tanakama, you can even use Meiser money to buy it. It's clearly a food. Umar says, Hasam Bidenischani. Over there, it's talking about the, the, the um, product of the male tree, which doesn't actually ripen into full dates. So over there, they had a, they had a male tree and a female tree. The female tree would give the fruits. The male tree is, just has flowers. So these flowers, these uh, small uh, berries, whatever they are, they don't actually ripen into dates, these buds. So those... Um, those are is the finished product, and that's why you, you can use those for. That's why those are considered food. if that's the case, Rabbi Yehuda says that it's pater from meiser. Rabbi Yehuda says that Okay, we're asking that if we're going to be talking about the, the food from the male tree, so Rabbi Yehuda holds that it's bottom from Maisa, but we have a Brisa that says, I'm Rabbi Yehuda Lehuskru, that when the sages spoke about that, he's talking about things that you're allowed to eat on Shemitah. You're supposed to only eat fruits, I think, while there's still items in the tree. Pagi baituni, these are um, uh, figs that did not ripen, but they come from a place called baituni. 
Why did they mention that? It's only, they only mentioned it regarding Miser because the sages said that these unripe dates, he needed Tavina, they come from a place called Tavina. Tavina, all the dates over there were, are, were uh, for male trees. They are Chayavim Miser. They are Chayavim Miser. That means that the view the holds that male trees are chayav and meiser. So why back by us did we say If you're dealing with male trees, we have a price where Rabbi Yehuda holds that the fruit of the male tree, which is not much of a fruit, is yes chayav and meiser. We're not talking about a regular tree that's a male tree. Linyan to and shani. However, our whole question was that if it's if it's um, not metamit to then it's, if it doesn't if it's not susceptible to impurity, then it's not considered a food. And so, therefore, we're asking why were you allowed to use it? Um, no, that if it is susceptible to masechlin, then it's considered a food. And so, why were you not allowed to use it for for Misa? So we answer, Kedamar Rabbi Yechanan, Hayol v'royel l'matkan al yedeya ar, Sahachanami, Hayol v'yachol l'matkan al yedeya ar. Really, in order to make an Erev, you need to have food that's already finished, that's ready to be eaten. In order to make something susceptible to Tumma, it has to be able to be edible. So regarding Tumma Seichlen, it doesn't need to be, uh, to be edible. Why? Because if you can cook it and you'll be able to, or you bake it and you'll be able to roast it, you'll be able to eat it, it's already metamitamasaychlin. Regarding an Erev, it needs to be like a deli. You know, it has to be, you have to be able to eat it right then without any F, without any work. Okay. Let me try to go through the next Gemara. Let's see if I can figure it out. Hecha itma de Rabbi Yechanan. Where was the statement of Rabbi Yechanan that he said, that there's this difference between uh, which is tame even before it's edible, and an Erev, which is, uh, which needs to be um, ready to eat. Ahadatanya was said about the following Raisa. Shkedem amarim. There's two types of, of almonds. There's bitter ones and sweet ones. Now, the bitter ones are bitter when they're, when they're ripe. However, when they're young, you can still eat them. So ketanim chayavin. When they're young, when they're unripe, they're chayavin maisa, because they don't get bitter until they're full. However, gedolim peturim. But when they're full, then they're exempt from maisa, because they're too bitter to eat. However, the opposite, misukim, the almonds that are sweet, gedolim is chayavin. Why, why, what does it mean they're sweet? When they're ripe, they're sweet. However, ketan and peturim, but when they're young, they're exempt from Meiser because they're not finished yet and actually bitter. Okay. Rav Shimon bar Rabbi Yaisi am Mishim Avav. Shimon bar Rabbi Yaisi, is it really Rav Shimon bar Rabbi Yaisi? Rabbi Shmal bar Rabbi Yaisi, okay. That's more familiar to us. Rabbi Shmal bar Rabbi Yaisi says in the name of his father, Rabbi Yaisi, Zebezeh, both types of almonds, big ones, or small ones, lifter. They're both exempt. Talking about the bitter ones. The bitter almonds are both exempt from ice. When they're big, when they're full, when they're ripe, they're too bitter to eat. When they're small, they're not fully ripe. You can eat them, but they're not fully ripe, so it's not the, uh, so it's potter from ice. Ba'amila, and some say that Zebazel Lechiyav, he said exactly the opposite. That the both of them are Chayav and Maisa. Amr Rabbi La, heard Rabbi Rabbi Chanina Bitzipari Kedivri Amir Zebazel Lifter. Rabbi La says that Rabbi Chanina, who was one of the early Amirim, in Meretz Yisrael, he passed him, like the opinion that says both of them are exempt from Maisa. Lamanda Mizabzel Lechia of the Mai Chazi. How does the other, what's the other opinion hold like? Why is it, why should he say that it's that Yechayev? So, Amar Rabbi Yechon and Hail 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 Rabbi
but because you can roast them and make them edible, so then it's chayev. It's chayev and it's uh, chayev and maisa. So that's where Rabbi Yechanan's statement was that anything that you can make it edible through roasting is considered a food. That's where we said also that it's metam to masaychan. Amar Mar. Rabbi Yehuda Amar Karri creates the whole devar of snikach because of maisa. Rabbi Yehuda holds that the hearts of palm is really wood. The only thing is that you're allowed to use maisa money, maisa sheni money in Yerushalayim to buy hearts of palm. Amar asks, I know Tanakama. That's the same as the Tanakama. Tanakama also said that it's not metamit to but you can use maisa money. Amar Abaya shlokai vitigna yikabinayit. The difference is if you cooked it for a long time or you fried it, that's the difference. According to the Tanakama, then it would already be Makabotum, and according to Rabbi Yehuda, it's still considered wood, it's not Makabotum. Maskif Lerava Mikulaman de Amar Shlaka Vitigne Lai. Is there anyone that holds that if you um, cook the hearts of palm or you fry the hearts of palm, that it's not considered food? But Tanya, or we have a Brysa. Skin of an end, the hide, Vashilian. Uh, that's not considered food. However, if someone in his mind decided that he's going to eat the hide, he's going to eat the shilya, then it becomes into food, even though it's really not edible. But if he's going to fix it in a way that, I don't know, he's going to cook it or prepare it in a way that it's going to make it edible, so then it becomes into a food. So therefore, even if you say that this is wood, hearts of palm, but nevertheless, if you prepare it in a way that it's food, then it should be considered food. Really, the machlekes between them is not about if it's metam to it's about what bracha to say. Itmar, because we had a gemara in brachas, kar, called it over there, kaira, that was the, Hearts of Palm, Rabbi Yudaimer, Bayri Priyadam, Rabbi says that you say Bayri Priyadam, Shmuel Amr Shakal Nibidvari. Shmuel said that you say Shakal. Rabbi Yudaimer, Amr Bayri Priyadam. This is a different Rabbi Yehuda than the Rabbi Yehuda of the, the Brisa. This is Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says that you say Bayri Priyadam, why? Uchlu. It's considered food. Shmuel Amr Shakal Nibidvari. Shmuel says that you say Shakal, why? If you don't cut it off the tree and you just leave it there, it's going to end up becoming uh, the wood of the tree. So, you don't say Adama and something like that. Amalei Shmuel or Rabbi Yehuda, Shmuel responds to, Shmuel says to Rabbi Yehuda, Shinina, that means um, sharp one or buck teeth. That's what he called his, his student. Kavaseich Mestabra, you're probably right. It's probably Adama, hearts of palm. That's nine. If you take my logic that anything that you leave on the tree or you leave it to grow is going to harden, is not considered a, a food. It's nine. What about a radish? If you leave it in the ground, it's going to get hard, but nevertheless, you still say very piyadama. It's going to turn into, into wood if you leave it in the ground. I don't know which radish, but I guess some radish, you leave it too long, it turns into like wood. And nevertheless, when it's ripe, when it's ready, you say hadama. Umar says Valaihi. It's not it's not a good proof. Shmuel was agreeing to Rabbi Yehuda, but really it wasn't a good proof. Why? Because it's not, not the Anishadai to the Pogula by the radish she planted for that. So that's why a radish is hadama. But Dikli not the Anishadai to the Kaira, but no one plants a date tree to be able to cut the inside out and to eat it for wood. They plant it for the dates. So the Afagab the Kalsi Shmuel Rabbi Yehuda, even though Shmuel said that Rabbi Yehuda is correct, Elchus Akav say the Shmuel and Hearts of Palm is really Shehakol, but the Dafim is not Allah Hashem. We probably.